So, um, I was in radio. I was working at a little tiny radio station in Greensboro, and I finally got a job at the big local television station. It was WFMY Channel 2. That's me. This is 1978. Anybody here born before 1978? Liar. <laughs> so uh, there I was working at Channel 2, and I was covering all of the big stories. There was the tank farm, the oil tank farm. You like my hair, the big glasses? It was the Klan rally. I mean, this was bad stuff. This was 1978, 79, when the Klan had a shootout with the Communist Workers' Party in Greensboro and five people died. This was big time journalism. Um, I even got to do weather stories in the ice cream shop. <laughs> so the biggest story, though the ongoing story, was in Alamance County, which was my heat. Alamance County is Burlington Graham. It's, you're driving up 85, you, you hit Greensboro, and then you keep going, and you get to Alamance County. And the big fight was over to whether to give discounts, tax breaks, to developers who were building new manufacturing plants. Sound familiar? Same stories keep come around and around. This was GKN, they were making constant velocity axles for cars. And something you may not have heard of called film, a company called Konica was making 35 millimeter film, this new high quality stuff. <laughs> And they were building a plant in Alamance County, and the county commissioners were debating about whether to give them a tax break. So this was big news. The meeting was called for 7 o'clock at night. I was working the evening shift that night, so off we went. Now, a few logistical things you have to remember. One is, Alamance County is out here. It's about 30 minutes drive from Channel 2. And on top of that, we were shooting 16 millimeter sound film. That took an hour to get through the processor. And then you also had to edit that material, which meant that you had to take an hour to do that with razor blades and glue to pull the film together. And then you had to break down the lights in the meeting and break down the tripod and get the microphones off the podiums. So that's another half hour. So effectively, for that 7 o'clock meeting, we only had until 8 o'clock. So the camera was set up behind me over my shoulder and shooting the county commissioners. There were only five of them, a small, small meeting room. The chairman was this amazing guy. Um, let's see if I can get it to go over here. That's him, Neil Flynn. <laughs> He was not a particularly well-educated man, but he was a very smart man. And he was determined to get through this meeting and get the tax breaks through for GKA and Conica. Well, the meeting got kind of heated. And the camera was rolling, and I had a little cassette recorder that I would plug into the camera to record the audio that was being recorded on the camera. I wrote it down so carefully, it's time this county got off its ass and did something about economic development. I knew I had my lead story. So we jumped back in the car and we went tearing back to Channel 2 and we got the film in the processor got the film out of the process on my script was great. The executive producer said, I've done a good job. Sit on the set and give us what the county commissioner says at the end of your report. It's time this county got off its ass and did something about economic development. Got it. That was a very good report from the anchor. Walked out and uh, 
I'm a good Christian man. I would never have used the word ass. I said backside. <laughs> I would like a contraction, please. He meant a retraction and a correction. <laughs> Push him off a little bit. I says, well, I'll call back tomorrow. So I talked to the news director, called him, and he said, don't worry about it. You, you've got it right. Is it in your notes? And I said, yes, it's in my notes. I wrote it down. And he says, you, you're probably right. The next day, Mr. Fleming calls back. He had a recording of the whole meeting. He plays it down the phone line. It's time this county got off its backside and did something about economic development. I had transposed it as, I had a dirty mind. <laughs> as I wrote it in my notepad. So there was a discussion and we agreed to uh, contraction. <laughs> we would do a correction at the end of that night's newscast. I wrote it, kind of sidled over to the anchor and said, do you mind reading this? No, you need to be on the set, son, and read that. <laughs> so, okay. About four o'clock, the phone rang. Chairman of the County Commission again, Mr. Fleming. <laughs> Mr. Griffiths, I've been hearing from people all over the county all day telling me how good I done calling it like it is. <laughs> <laughs> if it's okay with you, can we just leave it the way it is? <laughs> There was an ethical discussion with the news director at this point. Could we actually agree that something, could we not do a correction at this point? Finally, the news director said, just, just, just let it go. Just let it go. It was the first of a lot of mistakes in a 43-year journalism career. And some of the other mistakes I've made were far more dire and had much greater consequences. But this is the one that taught me that being open about my mistakes, kind of like that you name, is an important way of building rapport and trust with the community and with your colleagues. It also taught me that I had to have two recorders. <laughs> one to record what was on the film camera, and one was to record what else was going on. But the key thing was to be open about the mistakes. So that is my story.